Welcome, Farsan Galvanini, CTO of Smalltech. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Could you first tell us briefly about your background before joining Smalltech? I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and a master's degree in uh, microtechnology and nanoscience. Uh, I have a PhD in nanotechnology. That was the first time I, I got exposed to uh, carbon nanofibers. The purpose of my PhD and the dissertation was to uh, build nano-electromechanical systems based on these carbon nanofibers, especially a specific type of these carbon nanofibers that are called vertically aligned carbon nanofibers. These are exactly the same type of nanofibers we are using today uh, in small tech to build a capacitor. After that, I left academia and I worked with uh, uh, low maturity technologies, working with new technology development in different places. The last couple of years, uh, I was at Fingerprint Cards. There, uh, I also worked with new technology development. Uh, I worked on expanding the technology portfolio of the company from capacitive fingerprint sensors to optical and ultrasonic and other new types of uh, biometric technology. And then I started a small tech uh, a couple of months back. So ultra-thin capacitors, that is small tech's leading business area. And your aim is to reach uh, mass production in 2024. Could you describe the market segment that you will target initially? Sure. Yes, so uh, the market segment we are initially targeting is called landside capacitors. So uh, every active component, every microprocessor needs to be somehow decoupled from the environment surrounding it. This is very important because you don't want all these disturbances and noises leak into the active circuitry and disturb the function of that processor or, or other similar components. For doing, uh, for doing so and achieving this goal, you need to have uh, capacitors between your main component and the rest of circuitry. These capacitors are called uh, decoupling capacitors. So as the power consumption and the frequency at which these processor work at increases, they are evolving over time, they are getting more power hungry, they are working at higher and higher uh, frequency, you need to place these decoupling capacitors closer and closer to these processors or other active components. So the closest you could place these decoupling capacitors is right under the, uh, the processor, and that's why they are called uh, landside capacitors, because they are placed on the landing side of the processor where you place it on the printed circuit board. And this is the market we are, we are addressing. And as you could imagine, this places uh, high demands on the dimensions and the performance of such capacitors. And what would you say are the concrete advantages of using your capacitors in processors in, in mobile phones compared to what is available on the market today? Yeah, very good question. And um, if I get back to what I described uh, about these landside capacitors, as I said, uh, by placing them under the processor, you need to make them extremely small. At the same time, uh, they are offering the same performance as larger capacitor. So uh, for doing that, you need to uh, create a capacitor that has a very high capacitance density. So how does a capacitor work? You have two electrodes, and as you have a dielectric between these two electrodes. And you want to increase the capacitance, you increase the surface area of these electrodes. Right? So by increasing the surface area, you make it larger as well. Now we have a technology. We have a carbon nanofiber technology. So uh, on the footprint of this uh, capacitor, we are growing these nanofibers, these nanorods. And as you can imagine, by doing so, we are multiplying the active area of this surface to these huge areas that is offered by these nanofibers. 
this is a huge multiplication of the surface area of the electrodes. And we are exploiting these nanofibers as electrodes in our capacitor. There is no other technology that can give such huge increase in the surface area as we have in these uh, carbon nanofibers. By doing so, we could, we could create capacitors with very high capacitance at the smallest scale because we get very high capacitance per square millimeter of the capacitor footprint, and that is unique. Why would you say is there such a huge demand for these advantages? Right, so over the years, the, uh, uh, the power consumption of these microprocessors have been increasing gradually. The frequency at which they function has also uh, increased gradually over the years. So as I said, for uh, the decoupling capacitors they need, they have to be placed therefore closer and closer and therefore under the, uh, the processor. So we have observed an increased demand on these landside capacitors and these small footprint capacitors. And uh, I think that's where we're coming. What is your strategy to bring your ultra-thin capacitors to market? And how far have you come on this journey? Uh, yes, so I think, uh, if I may, I would divide this into two parts. Uh, a technology strategy and a business strategy. On the technology side, uh, we are now focusing on bringing and transferring our technology, our uh, microfabrication processes from a small-scale lab environment to, uh, to high volume. And in order to, uh, to achieve that, uh, we have to make sure of two important components. Number one is that we should show that we are able to grow uh, carbon nanofibers at large scale. And also we need to show that we are able to manufacture our capacitors in a foundry environment. So transferring the processes to a high volume, capable of high volume foundry processes. On the uh, business side, uh, we are working very closely with a major global manufacturer of capacitors. And we have now just signed uh, uh, a memorandum of understanding with them, which enables us to get access to our uh, end customers. This is very important, of course, from from business perspective, but also from technology perspective because it enables us to get their feedback early on and integrate those into the product development cycle, assuring that our product would be in line with what they want. What are the upcoming major milestones until you reach the market in 2024? Right, and if I may connect that with the previous question with our strategy, so, uh, as I said, it is very important for us to show that we are able to grow and manufacture these carbon nanofibers at a large scale. So, this is very unique. Nobody else has attempted to do that. But, uh, so, therefore, you cannot go to the market and buy such machine off the shelf. It has to be developed. We have a lot of experience with that. We have done that before with the smaller scale machine. And now we are doing that uh, very closely together with a major uh, provider of suppliers uh, of equipment of this type. We are building a plasma enhanced CVD equipment that is capable of growing carbon nanofibers with very good uh, uniformity and very good control on eight inch wafers. This is key to enable us to go to mass production. And uh, the milestone that we are, uh, we are after is to finalize the fabrication of this machine install it and bring it up to production. And we expect that happens sometime early next year. Uh, on the foundry side, right now we are working on our very first generation of capacitors that are being built in a foundry. Having that finalized is, and having the capacitors out is also a very important milestone for us. And on the business side, as I mentioned, we have just signed this MOU and uh, our next milestone is to get going with the project with our, uh, 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 our partner so that we could really get access to our end customers as fast as possible. 
And finally, how scalable would you say your technology is to other capacitor market segments? Yes, I would say that it's actually very scalable. So uh, once we know how to do this in a large scale for landside capacitor, we could bring that learning and expand that very quickly and scale it to other adjacent technologies. For example, as small tech over the years, we have developed this very unique uh, process recipe that allows us to grow these nanofibers at low temperature, relatively low temperature that is compatible with CMOS uh, technology, that is below 400 degrees C. And combining that, for example, with the possibility of building these capacitors and having, the, uh, having that finalized, we could bring this technology, Landside Capacitor, and directly do that in a CMOS circuit. So that would be, for example, uh, uh, another area that uh, we would be unique. Thank you very much, Farsan. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm.